Hey everyone, Metagross Freak here with the first video in my What's Up With Manufacturer series. In this series, I take a look at each manufacturer from Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel, examining not only the lore behind the series the manufacturer, but also some of the unique, pearlescent, and legendary weapons available from that manufacturer. First up, we have TDR. TDR is essentially your gun on a budget manufacturer. No matter what game you're playing, TDR always has the cheapest guns in the game, and so are probably the worst weapons to pick up if you plan on just picking up loot to sell it. Um, an interesting thing about TDR is that in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, it has the ability of when you reload the gun, it is thrown like a grenade and explodes. The more ammo you have in the magazine, the more damage that explosion does. In Borderlands 1, this function is not present. However, in all three games, TDR weapons have the best reload speeds out of all manufacturers. Instead of having that reload function in Borderlands 1, legendary or higher TDR weapons regenerate ammo. This can be really nice if you're, say for example, using a lot of SMG ammo, you can switch to instead to a TDR SMG. That way, during some of your downtime, like when running around or just looting crates after cleaning out an area, you can regenerate some of the ammo you spent wiping out bandits, monsters, robots, etc. So, let's get started on looking at some of the unique, pearlescent, and legendary weapons from TDR. Uh, first up is the Chiquito Amigo, which is a repeater pistol made by TDR, and because it's a purple rarity, it actually just has a really big magazine and a high fire rate. This would actually be pretty good if it was in Borderlands 2 because of the big magazine. However, it's only in Borderlands 1. I unfortunately have not played in Borderlands 1, but just having the fact that it's a extended magazine, high fire rate, and a high reload speed sounds pretty good for a pistol. Next up is the Bone Shredder. It's, this is actually a weapon you can get pretty early on in the game, considering you can get it in the Arid Badlands. Uh, this weapon can also be obtained in Borderlands 2 and in Borderlands the pre-sequel. However, there it is a Bandit slash Scav weapon, respectively. Um, though one, one of the really cool things about the Bone Shredder in Borderlands 1 is it's guaranteed to have two accessories, rather than just one, and it's guaranteed to have a scope. Um, if you're looking for a really good SMG, the Bone Shredder is one of the best SMGs that is non-legendary that you can find. Now we go on to essentially the legendaries for TDR, which all essentially have the same ability, which is ammo regeneration, like I mentioned before. Uh, first up is the Guardian Combat Rifle, which actually can spawn with a magazine that allows it to have burst fire, similar to a Borderlands 2 or pre-sequel doll weapon. The Protector is a pistol, again with ammo regeneration, that has high damage. The Equalizer is a revolver, which also has ammo which also has ammo regeneration. Next up is the Defender, which is a shotgun, again with regeneration. And the Savior, which is an SMG with regeneration. Last but not least, we have the we have the Avenger. In Borderlands 1, the Avenger is a combat rifle that has a high zoom scope. It has a bonus critical hit damage mod modifier, and it has single shot slow ammo regeneration, single shot slow ammo regen in, in exchange for a high magazine, high damage, high tech tighter spread. Essentially, this sounds to me like it's essentially a sniper rifle in combat rifle form, which is actually pretty cool considering that it regenerates ammo. You know, I wish I had a sniper rifle that could regenerate ammo regardless of what game it was. Now onto the Borderlands 2 weapons. Uh, one, of the, one of the least known weapons from TDR is the Blockhead. This can be obtained from the Minecraft Easter Egg, which fires a 3x3 spread of fireballs that actually ricochet off walls. They're actually This is actually a really cool shotgun, and the fact that it has an, a nice enough magazine that you can chuck it to be a fire grenade is also pretty cool, and it comes from an awesome Easter Egg. If you are willing to put in a, you know, as much as you know, half 20 minutes to an hour to farm for a blockhead, it's really worth it. It's a fun gun. 
Next up is the Octo, which is a unique shotgun, which can be obtained in Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel from various different missions, essentially involving tentacle creatures. Um, it fires eight pellets in a 3x3 pattern, with the center left pellet missing. The pellets are kind of slow moving and fly in a sine wave pattern, but if you're able to get a, a good enough distance where all eight pellets come together at a single point right on someone's crit spot, it, they can be killed very easily. Also, the reload damage is pretty good for a shotgun. Next up is the Gunnerang. The Gunnerang is, is a pistol obtained from Rackman in the fridge, and in Borderlands the pre-sequel has a counterpart called the Shooterang. Essentially, when it's thrown after reload, it travels in a straight line for a good distance, and then comes back towards the user, towards the thrower, I mean. Um, it can explode similar to a boomerang, however, if you're not careful and it comes back to you, it can explode on you, so be careful. Next up is the Baby Maker. The Baby Maker also appears in Borderlands the pre-sequel with a different name of the IVF. Uh, this, as an SMG, it has a really good magazine, and it spawns child grenades when thrown. Um, this is actually just really good. The child grenades actually, while, while weaker and smaller than the Baby Maker, actually, actually, you know, does a good amount of damage. Plus, the Child Grenade actually has a chance to spawn a second or third projectile from it. If you have good luck and a high enough magazine, the Baby Maker's Reload can do phenomenal damage, and it's actually a pretty decent gun on its own. Uh, next up is the Deliverance, which is another shotgun, which can be attained from Toomba in the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve. What's really cool about this gun is rather than being simply thrown like a grenade, it homes in on targets, flying after them even if they're running away, and continues to shoot at them. This damage doesn't really do a ton of damage, but it continues to, to fire while chasing them, and when it actually does explode, it does, well, less than amazing explosion damage. This can actually be really nice if you're willing to simply fire one shot and reload. You can essentially have like five or six of these chasing enemies. It's really funny to watch, though it's not really an easy weapon to farm for. Next up is the bunny, which is, in my opinion, a terrible gun. Uh, when you shoot the rockets, they, well, aren't amazing. But when you reload, the reloaded gun, rather than flying like a torpedo at an enemy, like most TDR rocket launchers, hops around, kind of similar to a bouncing bonnie grenade, kind of like a rabbit leaping around. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think the rockets did that too, though they may have patched that out. The bunny isn't really that amazing of a rocket launcher, damage-wise, and its reload effect is really difficult to use as well. Not really worth farming, in my opinion. Next up is the Retcher. The Retcher is unfortunately yet another bad E-Tech weapon, and it's a shotgun that you get from Hyperius. Hyperius has a lot of great weapons, like the Norfleet and the Tattler in his loot pool, but the Retcher is, is arguably the worst. The Retcher is an E-Tech shotgun that can only come in explosive element and shoots in arcing projectiles that have shorter arcs than normal E-Tech shotguns. Reloading will trigger two child grenades from the explosion, and the Retcher only consumes one ammo per shot, unlike other E-Tech shotguns. But just by comparison, it's one of the worst weapons in Hyperius's arsenal of uh, loot pool, and it's just not really that good, since E-Tech shotguns aren't that great to begin with. However, the one E-Tech shotgun that is good is the Omen, another E-Tech TDR shotgun. However, it's available from Tiny Tina's Dragons of Destruction. This gun is essentially an E-Tech version of the Octo shotgun. In fact, it basically has the same idea, except it has nine projectiles instead of eight, and has a reduced cost for ammo as compared to other E-Tech weapons. If you're able to get all nine of the projectiles right at a single crit point, this can be massive damage, and reloading it has a really good reload too. Next up is the Avenger. The Avenger is a pain in the butt weapon to use, but it's actually really good. You can get it from legendary loot midgets or from OMG WTF at the very end of the, uh, essentially at the end of the gauntlet. 
It has really high stats, meaning it's a great gun. However, it, when you reload it, bounces around like a Betty bouncing Betty grenade, firing bullets everywhere. The reload is really hard to aim, and you can actually damage yourself from the bouncing bullets. Um, luckily, the Avenger kind of takes a note from the original Borderlands, and it has regenerating SMG ammo, which is awesome. I don't really know why they turned the Avenger from Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 2 into an SMG, considering the original Borderlands 1 was a uh, was a combat rifle. So the fact that they turned it into an SMG is kind of weird, but I guess they decided that with so many TDR shotguns that have unique effects, they decide, maybe they just decided an SMG was better. This is a good gun, but if you want really good reload damage, the IVF slash uh, Baby Maker is significantly better. Next up is the Fastball. The Fastball is the only uh, unique TDR grenade from Borderlands 2, and it has zero fuse time, ridiculously tiny blast radius, and massive damage. I am currently using a level 11 Fastball on one of my Axtons, and the grenade damage is still 10 times higher than most level 20 grenades I'm finding. If you want to have a ridiculously OP grenade, go with the Fastball. Next up is the first of the three shields before we go on to weapons from the pre-sequel. The, fir the first up being the Cracked Sash. The Cracked Sash is actually a legendary... It's actually, it's actually kind of a... Uh, it's, it's not really legendary, but it's a very rare variant that can be obtained from chubby enemies. Um, it's essentially a... It's essentially a TDR shield that has ridiculously high... Fi uh, ridiculously high recharge rate, really, really low recharge delay, and a capacity that's only about half of the recharge rate. Basically, you only have to wait about a second or two before you instantly restore your entire capacity. If you're familiar with the Not Shield from Borderlands 2, uh, from the, if you're familiar with the Not Shield from Borderlands the pre-sequel, the Cracked Sash is essentially what it's based on. Finally is the Cradle. The Cradle is a terrible legendary, unfortunately, and I feel bad for anyone who gets this when they're just fighting Henry, or gets it from a random drop. While it seems cool in, in concept, when the shield is depleted, it tosses in a similar fashion to other TTR weapons. This would be cool, except the damage is low, even at, well, high levels, and it's not that great of a shield in general. As a low capacity, but a fast charge. I don't know. If you like being able to chuck out extra grenades for free, it's kind of cool, but at level 50, it's still only around 5,000 damage, which is really ineffective. Um, this is good on low level cradles, but unfortunately, the time, by the time you can get it by farming Henry, you're already basically too high of a level to be effective. If you have a save editor where you're able to give you like a low like level one or two character a cradle, or if you happen to find one just out and about looting crates at a really low level, this can be really cool. But basically, once you get to sanctuary and on, it kind of loses its it kind of loses its value. Now it's time for weapons from the pre sequel. First up is the Volt Thrower, which is from the weapon. No such thing as a three as a free launch and is a rocket launcher from TDR that is always shock element, has increased rocket speed, magazine, magazine size, elemental effect chance, and elemental effect damage. However, it has a reduced explosion radius. If you're really good at aiming your rocket launcher reloads, this can actually be kind of cool, considering the increased rocket speed and magazine size make for a really nice, almost fastball-like effect. But if you suck at aiming your reloads and you're relying heavily on that status damage, it's not the best. And it kind of sucks in UVHM, even with the better scaling of pre-sequel. If you're, if you're really into this weapon, go ahead and use it, but it's not the best. Speaking of not the best, the Vander, Ga the Vander Graffen is a, unique, is a unique laser that drops from deadlift. It's always shock element, has an increased elemental effect chance, and while moving it has a cool ability to just like flash and look like it's being electrocuted, similar to an SMG from Borderlands 2. It's not a great laser, but it's probably going to be one of the first lasers you obtain. 
I would recommend holding on to it until you get to Concordia and then selling it. Like I mentioned before, the Octo appears in Borderlands the pre-sequel. If you can get to the mission Lab 19, I would recommend picking it up. It's pretty decent. The Miniman Lighter is a legendary laser by Tedior that is kind of a mixed bag. It consumes 5 ammo per shot and is always it has a, has a low fire rate that shoots low, slow lightning, uh, lightning balls that bounce off objects and deal damage to all enemies near the ball in a good radius, but shooting the lightning ball with any other weapon creates a giant explosion, kind of similar to Death Trap's 1-2 boom skill. If you're good at the 1-2 boom skill, then Min Min Lighter might be, the, might be the weapon for you, though there are better lasers out there and better TDR weapons. Like I mentioned before, the Shooter Rang is similar to the Gunner Rang from Borderlands 2. Um, however, the Shooter Rang has a higher magazine size and higher gun damage, which actually makes it better. Also, uh, the Shooter Rang is improved because it can bounce off surface, surfaces and fires constantly while flying, meaning it can, you, have the, you have a better potential to do more damage before it explodes. Uh, like I mentioned before, the IVF is the same thing as the Baby Maker. However, the IVF is guaranteed to have two child grenades instead of one that can potentially drop others. The IVF is essentially just a slightly better version of the Baby Maker and is an amazing SMG that you can farm from the Boson and early game. Kanada's Laser is one of my personal favorite rocket launchers from TDR, as well as one of my favorite rocket launchers ever. Instead of firing rockets, this weapon uses explosive lasers. That's right, lasers that deal explosive damage, that are ex and they are extremely accurate. The Kanada's Laser is essentially one of the most accurate rocket launchers in the game, and it's the only rocket launcher that can inflict critical hits. It's basically a sniping rocket, and it's awesome. Unfortunately, it can only drop from Shadow Trap, so if you can get him in either System Shutdown or during the Leet Haxers, uh, basically, like, you know, if you can get it during the Leet Haxers uh, farming missions, you actually can get this weapon, though you're better off just trying to grind for it in the grinder. The System's Purge is the only unique TDR Oz kit that you can get from Claplek. Um, basically, when your Oz kit is above 75, your next shot will consume 50 Oz and release a shock wave around the point of impact, knocking back enemies and dealing non-elemental damage. And when you kill enemies, it restores 12 Oz. Essentially, this is kind of the equivalent of having an amp shield which, if you put it with an amp shield, gives you pretty nice damage and is really good for a character like Aurelia. On any other character, though, well, you're probably off getting a different Oz kit. My recommendation would be the Eddy. If you're a fan of the Snowball, then you definitely would like the Fastball. Oh wait, let me flip that around. If you're a fan of the Fastball, you'll probably be a fan of the Snowball. The Snowball basically acts similar to the Fastball, except it is only in Cryo, and the projectile speed's a little bit slower. This is a really fun grenade mod to use. Unfortunately, I just wish it came in other, other elements like Fire, Shock, Cryo, and hell, just regular explosive. This is a really fun grenade, and when you kill people with it, it basically just explodes in a giant ball of ice, acting similar to a cryo longbow grenade with a very small blast radius. I'd recommend getting it, because while the mining laser from Infinite Loop is good, the snowball will basically last you for a good 10 or 15 levels before you need to even think about picking up another grenade. The Cradle is once again appearing in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Unfortunately, it's not much better in Borderlands the pre-sequel. I actually don't know where exactly to get it in Borderlands, in Borderlands the pre-sequel, though it appears somewhere. If you happen to find this shield, hope that you get it with good scaling, because the discard toss damage when the shield is depleted isn't amazing, and I, in my opinion, you're better off just getting a cracked sash. Last but not least, I want to talk about the both the body and barrel of TDR 
lasers. Uh, Tidior bodies, when you toss them for lasers, rather than exploding like a grenade, have a shock tether. Um, if you're familiar with Vladoff weapon, uh, Vladoff um, grenades that are shock, it kind of functions similarly before exploding into the element that it is assigned. Um, because all lasers are guaranteed to be elemental, you're at minimum going to get a fire explosion, or you could potentially get one of the other three elements, though fire is always guaranteed because that is the non-elemental quote-unquote version for lasers. Uh, last but not least is Tidior. Tidior barrels essentially act like shotguns, consuming, uh, consuming am ammunition at a slight increase to have a shotgun-like spread of lasers. Um, on Dahl, Hyperion, and Mollywan lasers, this fires three laser projectiles. However, if you have a TDR barrel on a TDR laser, it fires six. Um, TDR lasers aren't the best lasers, but they can be really fun if you like the concept of a laser shotgun. Also, you may have noticed, seeing all the various different pictures, that in Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel, TDR weapons have a very boxy look. When seen from the side, they essentially have a very square appearance. Uh, the last weapon I forgot to mention is, of course, the boxy gun, which is kind of the good lead segue into it. The boxy gun is a unique SMG obtained from Digestructed Madness and is kind of, well, a mixed bag. It's always shock, has increased bullet damage, and for some reason, a slow reload speed. Projectiles can ricochet off walls twice, but these bullets also have decreased projectile speed. However, this gun basically goes against the entire idea of TDR, because for most TDR weapons, you only have to fire one shot before you can reload it, and because you have a near full magazine, that reload damage is massive. With the boxy gun, however, the higher your magazine is, the higher chance it has to explode in your face, dealing damage to you. So essentially, you want to get this gun down to 1 or 0 to make sure you have the smallest chance of killing yourself before chucking it at an enemy doing, well, mediocre damage at best. I saved the boxy gun for the end because it's arguably one of the worst TDR guns, but it is perfect for showing off this the boxy appearance. Most TDR weapons have a very square silhouette, and a lot of the higher weapons you'll notice, have a pattern, have kind of like a checkerboard pattern on them. TDR is a very interesting manufacturer, and I'm kind of glad I got to look at this one first, because it's kind of my least favorite manufacturer, other than the Condita's Laser, the IVF slash Baby Maker, and the uh, Omen Shotgun. I'm really not a big fan of TDR, though if you're interested in the whole reloading gimmick or ammo regeneration, with faster reload speed, depending on which game you're playing, check out TDR. I've been Metagross Freak, and I'll see you next time when I go over one of my favorite manufacturers, Torg.